Welcome to Curtis Ghost Corner, coming to you from a secret underground base in occupied America. Welcome back, all you threats to democracy, thought criminals, and extremists. And those of you that are new, welcome. And PJ Media, the socialist politician who shows that Trump can run for re-election despite Mayor Garland and Joe Biden's legal games. It was an individual by the name of Debs. You see there, Eugene Debs. He ran for president five times, I think, and uh, right during World War I in the 1920s. And he was thrown in jail for telling American men not to, uh, when they were drafted into the World War I, not to go. And so he was jailed for that, which is kind of ironic because almost the entire Democrat Party now is socialist in nature, progressive. So I find that pretty funny. So let's, uh, let's read on. What were the Republicans would say, thank you, Eugene V. Debs? Who? Debs, who ran for president five times beginning in 1900 and with a run against William McKinley, was the father of the socialist political movement in the United States. In fact, his 1920 run had an unusual, was unusual in two ways. First, he got an all-time high vote total for a socialist candidate. That's probably about three, four million today from that total, 913,000. Second, his campaign slogan was, vote for, Bryce, for President Convict 9653. That'd be something like Trump would do. He's not a socialist at all. Sorry, Trump haters and all you people citing penalties under U.S. Code 2071. And he shall forfeit his office and be disqualified, blah, 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 from holding any office on the United States. None of this applies to candidates for president. Even if some evil genie named Merrick Garland and Joe Biden, three wishes, they asked that the Trumps should be locked up and the key buried at the bottom of the sea, it would be meaningless. The Dapper Donald would still be elected president of the United States. Later courts have affirmed this right of voters. That's right. It's the right. You're taking away the right of voters, not the person running for the office. Especially citing the Debs case, the swearing in ceremony might might be awkward, but how sweet the signing of the pardon would be. <laughs> I like this guy's writing already. I got, I got to highlight that. But how sweet the signing of the pardon would be. In a flood of liberal tears be enough to make Death Valley bloom. Maybe they could help all those liberal tears in Lake Mead. They're running out of water. Yeah, it'd be salty, though. Deb, something of a socialist crank, was known as a jolly good fellow by the warden, guards, and prisoners. He was in prison under Woodrow Wilson's Espionage Act, the same type of charge being used by Attorney, Merrick, Attorney General Merrick Garland to go after Trump. Debs was convicted for giving anti-war speech in Canton, Ohio, urging non-compliance with World War I draft in 1917. This addition case made it through the courts, ending up on the Supreme Court docket. Oh, God. Here, there, the progressive Yankee from Olympus, Oliver Wendell Holmes, wrote the unanimous opinion affirming Debs' 10-year prison term. Social critic H.L. Mencken later said that Holmes was no more of an advocate of the rights of lawmakers. Even after World War I ended, progressive Woodrow Wilson, arguably the worst president ever in the history of the country, worse than Biden is now and worse than Jimmy Carter. President Wilson refused to pardon a perennial socialist gladified Debs, demonstrating that once again, progressives and free speech mix is easily in oil and water. It's only free speech when you say things that we agree with. Debs was not a religious man. He must have been happy on Christmas Day when Republican Warren hiding the great president who first put the roar in the roaring 20s, pardon him. And they go on a little bit, you know, talk about... They called him an incarcerated person, and, and now they call it instead of inmate. And take note that Deb's vote count went up when in prison when they imprisoned him, just as Donald Trump's poll numbers were rising with the Department of Justice again trying to convict him. From my understanding is, well, the times he ran for president, he was literally in jail. It still was on the ballot as the Communist Party uh, candidate. So you can't run for public office. Yeah, okay. These morons, they have to know this. 
They're, between the FBI and the DOJ, it's kind of like the military. They have their historians. They know this stuff. They know what was done before. They know what precedent is. Then you have to ask yourself again, why did they do it that way at Mar-a-Lago? Why, why, why? And they have a 90-day rule, 90 days before an election. They usually don't pull something like this. And I believe when they invaded Trump's house, it was the 91st day from the election. That way they're outside the 90-day ban. This whole thing stinks. Stinks to high heaven. It's amazing to me. I've always been a great believer in not what people do is why. Here's an interesting quote here. Well, the necessity of free speech is most important. We shut it off. Everybody favors free speech in the slack moments when there are no axes being grinded. Yeah. Yep. The arc from the progressive Democrats of the 1920s to the progressive Democrats of the 2020s remain a clear challenge to our political freedom. Why do they do it this way? Why do they do it? Why did Garland sign off on it? I don't get it. He knew damn well none of these things were criminal, intent or legal. They just can't be prosecuted. It was simply to tear down maybe the Republicans, some of the so-called ultra mega candidates that Trump is endorsing who they knew would rally to Trump's defense, especially in close elections in congressional districts. That's an impeachable offense on its own, but I won't, I digress. I can't think of a reason. I really and truly can. Now they're going to show the warrant, but it's the affidavit that was given to the judge that okayed the warrant that you really need to see. The things that were said that weren't true or exaggerated or both, a.k.a. lies. It's the affidavit that you're really after. It's like we'll never see the affidavit given to the FISA judges for the secret uh, bugging and spying on the Trump campaign in 2016. We'll never see that. Because they're sealed in secret. We'll never even know who the FISA judges were that okayed the warrant. That stinks. And this is what's going on here. And they do release the the affidavit. They're going to black out 90% of it. What a a farce. So, it seems like, according to this, and uh, millions of other legal scholars, including some on the left... Even if Trump is convicted, which he won't, but even if he was, he still can run for president in 2024. It's just Democrats can just run a commercial. Convicted felon Donald Trump. This whole thing sucks, and it's a farce. But the brainwashed cult members, the city urban liberal types, C-U-L-T, just will never get this. But little do they realize that by advocating for this illegal activity and undermining the Constitution of the Republic, that even if they're successful, God forbid, that gun is going to be pointed at them next time by the the administrative state and the DOJ, a.k.a. the FBI. They're going to go after people they don't like, period. And they might be next and probably will be. They just don't get it. Until the next time, goodbye and good luck.